CTV News with Jackie Scandlebury. Good afternoon. A warning from Alberta health officials after two Southern Albertans have tested positive for West Nile virus. These are the first confirmed cases in Alberta this year. One is a woman in her 40s. The other is a man in his 50s. Both contracted the disease earlier this month. We don't know where they contracted the virus or where the two people are from. Alberta Health is reminding people to take precautions, like using insect repellent and wearing light-colored clothes. You can also reduce the risk by staying indoors during dawn and dusk when mosquitoes are most active. Last year, there were nine cases of West Nile reported in Alberta, including one death. It was an emotional day today for some staff at the Chinook Regional Hospital. They gathered to show support and raise money for a co-worker who is fighting cancer. The treatment has been done in Calgary and the family has been having to make trips back and forth from Lethbridge for the past six months, adding to the expense of her treatment. Jeanette Rocher has the story. For Anatoly Rizovic, this is no ordinary haircut. This buzz is in honor of his wife of 33 years. Last February, Tatiana Rizovic was diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia. Uh, Monday, she was discharged from, uh, from hospital after five uh, chemotherapy treatments, full body radiation and uh, bone marrow transplant. But Rizovic isn't alone. Nine of Tatiana's co-workers from Chinook Regional Hospital shaved their heads and cut their hair as a way of showing their support for what the Rizovic family is going through. You have to know her. She's quite an amazing woman. Um, she will bend over backwards for anybody. She's quite a woman. When Sherry Van Sleigdenhorst came to work today, her hair was 10 inches longer. My hair was long and I heard of a lot of the complications that Tatiana has went through and it touched my heart. And I wanted to do something for her. And when I said to one of my coworkers, we need to do something for her because she's one of our own. She's one of us. It kind of started with just donations, seeing if people wanted to uh, give blood or if they wanted to donate some money to help her and her family out. And then we came up with the idea to uh, see how many people would be interested in shaving their hair. And the support has been overwhelming. Tatiana's co-workers were able to raise $3,000 and donate several feet of hair to make wigs for cancer patients. We were deeply touched and uh, the support was going on from the day she was diagnosed till seven months later. Jeanette Roche, CTV News, Lethbridge. Tatiana has now been moved to the Bone Marrow Transplant Clinic in Foothills Hospital in Calgary, where the family is renting an apartment for her. The money raised today will help with rent and travel back and forth to Calgary. David Spence, a little cloudy today, but lots of sunshine on the way. Yes, uh, for sure. We even had some uh, rain showers uh, going through the area earlier this afternoon. They've moved well off to the northeast now, and we're going to, uh, as you say, continue to see a clearing sky and uh, with some sunshine over the next few days. I think temperatures are going to climb back into the high 20s and even the low 30s for most of the rest of the week. Will this include the long weekend? That's the big question. The big answer is coming up later on The Big Show. All right, we'll stick around. Thank you, David. Five teens are facing charges after a Lethbridge skate park was vandalized with graffiti. This is a look at the damage at the Lethbridge multi-purpose skate park on Stafford Drive North. There was over $5,000 damage caused. Police say they've noticed an increase in graffiti in the Westminster neighborhood over the past few months, and some of the tags were similar to those at the skate park. Five boys have been charged with mischief, including a 16-year-old, three 15-year-olds, and a 14-year-old. The reason why charges were laid were because of the severity of the graffiti, the amount of graffiti uh, that was uh, applied in uh, one occurrence. Um, often you are going to find graffiti there, but the graffiti technically is not allowed at the skate park. It is an illegal activity and it is a uh, criminal code offence. There's also City of Lethbridge bylaw prohibiting graffiti in Lethbridge. All of the teens will appear in court September the 11th. Well, a couple more lawsuits have hit the courts concerning the Jumbo Glacier Resort. First, the resort itself has filed an application to remove protesters from the road to Farnham Glacier, blocking workers from going up. But the protesters and the Tunaha First Nation have both filed applications with the B.C. Supreme Court to stop construction. 
Protesters are still worried about the province approved resort saying it could alter the glacier, but the province and resort say no harm will come to it. A federal tax court judge has ordered the leader of a B.C. polygamous commune to pay nearly $150,000 in tax penalties. Winston Blackmore tried appealing a tax assessment that concluded he understated his income by $1.8 million over a six-year period. Blackmore had argued that a section of a tax law designed to allow Hutterite colonies to divvy up income among members for tax purposes should apply to Bountiful, which practice practices a fundamentalist form of Mormonism that allows polygamy. But the judge in the case ruled Bountiful does not meet any of the required criteria for that status. Well, there's going to be something new you'll have to keep in mind this year if you want to vote in the October civic election in Lethbridge. All Lethbridge voters will now need to bring in a piece of identification. It can be a driver's license, a utility bill, or any document with your legal name and current address on it. In the past, Lethbridge voters only had to sign a declaration. But the province is mandating all municipalities comply with the ID rule. The city wants to make sure all residents are aware of all the changes so people don't get left out on election day. We just want to make sure people are aware of what the rules are so that when they do go to the voting station that they are prepared and they've taken steps to make sure that they can vote because the worst thing that could happen is someone would be unable to vote. The city says students and the elderly are probably going to be the most affected because some may not have acceptable ID. You can get more information at the city website. Well, another person has stepped forward in the race for a seat on Lethbridge City Council. George McRae ran unsuccessfully in the February 2011 by-election to fill a vacancy left by the death of Alderman-elect Bob Babke, but says he's ready to try again. McRae is a former Mountie who later started his own drilling business. He's the ninth person to announce that he intends to run. And Darlene McLean has also announced that she's going to be running for city council. McLean has worked in the financial services industry for almost 20 years. Workers at the Real Canadian Superstore may be one step closer to walking off the job. Calgary and Edmonton workers voted 97% in favour of strike action. Workers are upset about the hours they can work. Many are part-time and depend on a certain number of shifts to survive. Vice President of Public Relations for Loblaws, the parent company, says they are hoping to reach a deal before any more strikes can take place. The union says strike votes are meant to send a message and are not an indication that workers want to go on the picket lines. Six Air Canada employees in Medicine Hat could face layoffs after a labour arbitrator ruled some services at the Medicine Hat Regional Airport could be contracted out. Local ticket agents were informed of the decision last month. It means Air Canada Jazz can move ahead with plans to find a local contractor to provide booking and front desk service. According to the union that represents the workers, the airline is trying to reduce costs in the face of increased competition, but the union says the public will be affected since the work will be done by inexperienced people. They say across the country, about 200 employees could lose their jobs over the next few years. Well, the final tally from June's flooding is still up in the air, but damage has been pegged at more than $400 million. The Canadian Tax Payers Federation projects the provincial deficit will grow from $5 billion to $8 billion because of the flooding. It says there's not enough cash in rainy day funds to pay for it all. We have no money left in the sustainability fund to pay for flood relief, to pay for rebuilding uh, homes and rebuilding businesses and public infrastructure. So the money's going to come out of, out of debt, and we're projecting that uh, based on the overspending deficit that we had before the flood and with the flood damage taken together, we're going to be running a $14 billion cumulative deficit over the next three years. The Federation says the province should roll back the salaries of provincial employees by 6%, or by 6 to 10% to pay for the flood costs, and it wants flood insurance to be mandatory for all, all Albertans. And there is more bad news for students at flood-ravaged Elbow Park School in Calgary. The portables that they were supposed to use for the start of the next school year coming up this week are not there. Now, with their school still too damaged to use, the kids are just learning they'll have to go to school someplace else. Most Southern Alberta children will be back in the classroom next week, but staff and teachers are already gearing up for their new school term. The Holy Spirit Catholic School Division kicked things off this morning with an opening mass and spiritual development day. The district is embarking on a new three-year faith plan that encourages staff and students to put on their gospel faith into action. Also, this year, there will be full-time youth ministers that will work out of the Catholic schools. 
We've got our new, a new faith plan, which is certainly a good kickoff to that. And uh, with the government's uh, push for inspiring education, uh, that's a great opportunity for our staff, and it's a great opportunity for our students. Uh, developing that learner engagement, where we're trying to move from uh, compliant students to committed learners. And uh, that's it. that should be exciting for all of our staff to make that transition, and certainly for our students. Really great that the three-year faith plan is also aligned with Alberta Education's priorities in terms of the engaged thinker, the ethical citizen, and an entrepreneurial spirit. So we're looking at those three priorities from Alberta Ed through a Catholic lens, which is really unique and really exciting for our school division. And to the financial markets where the TSX eked out a minor gain despite concerns over Syria pushing oil prices higher.